Hey everybody, Matt Ruck here with another video of Pixelmon in Minecraft. Today I'm going to be talking about something that I think literally everybody playing a Pixelmon online server could benefit from, and that is farming legendaries. I've seen a lot in recent history. When I type in slash legend in the game, and you see like the legendary log of like what spawned in recent history on the server it seems like most of the time we get like genesis and entes and suicudes just legendaries that nobody's really excited to get anymore and uh, i just wanted to let you guys know that over the past week i have gotten two kyogres a entei a latios and a landris to spawn on me and I, like, I'm playing on a server that typically probably gets around two or 300 unique players every day. And on average, a, le a legendary spawns once an hour. So with those kinds of numbers, I should be lucky to get a single legendary every week. And that's if I played all day every day. But somehow I've managed to get five legendaries. And uh, I'd say four of them are actually pretty like sought after. Entei, yeah, I get it. It's one of the ones that really don't matter. But the Latios, Landers especially, and then the two Kyogres are extremely valuable. So stay tuned for the rest of the video so you can kind of take advantage of the tips that I'm going to be providing you to get the, the really rare and valuable legendary spawning. Now when it comes to target farming legendaries to like farm them, to like spawn them in, there's two really important pieces of information that you need to know about the legendary to like properly target farm it. And that is the, the biome that it spawns in and the time of day that it actually spawns in. So if you go to the, uh, the Google, type in Pixelmon legendary spawning wiki, it should bring up this list which shows all of the legendary Pokemon in the game, what biome they spawn in, and what time of day they spawn in. It also shows the ones that have like specific like requirements. Like this one, it shows like this biome has the time space alter, which is what you use to spawn in the Arceus. So the first thing I want to talk about is actually how to kind of help yourself with the spawn time. Now, obviously you can't control the time of day for an online Minecraft server. However, when I'm mining, when I'm running around doing stuff, I'd like to have a pixel or a minecraft clock in my inventory and this is just to kind of help me gauge like what time of day it is if i'm underground and i can't see like the sun i like to be able to know like if it's dawn dusk uh morning or nighttime because it kind of helps to narrow down what potential legendaries could be spawning during the next spawn period so the next thing that we really need to focus on is the biomes now obviously some of these legendaries the ones that i was mentioning before like Entei, they spawn in just mountainous, like a very broad or general biome, which is why we see them so often. Uh, there's tons of biomes that are considered mountainous, um, but the ones that you, we're likely going to be focusing on are the ones that have the very specific biome, such as like Jirachi, Extreme Hills Plus M. This is a, a subset within the Extreme Hills biome, and they are extremely rare. Um, and you can see, through looking through this list, there's a bunch of legendaries that fall under this category of having fairly uncommon biomes that they spawn in. Landorus is another great one. Landorus is a, a Pokemon that can be found on a lot of battling teams that are not uber, like uh, that don't allow ubers. So Mesoplato FM is a very, or an extremely rare biome. Um, on top of that, he spawns at only dawn and dusk, which is the smallest time slot, um, making this an extremely rare Pokemon and target farming him is, I would say the best way to get him. But anyways, to really focus on the biome, you need to actually go through the server and find the biome that you want to actually farm the, the specific legendary. Now, once you find the biome, you need to find a way that you can easily get go back and forth from like your home or like what you're doing, like the activity that you're working on, back to that biome so you can easily go there if the spawn timer is going to trigger at the right time of day for that legendary to spawn. So what I'm, to kind of summarize what I just said, in the server that I play on, they have slash homes that are available that you can use to set like essentially a checkpoint or a waypoint that you can easily teleport to. So like the one that's given to everybody is slash spawn. Uh, if you type in slash spawn, it takes you to the starting point for all new players in the game. The center point of the server essentially, uh, which is where spawn is. It's got all the basic stuff, but you can also get more spawns by going using the uh, the points that you get by voting for the server. So if you go to point shop, you can see that 100 voting points or pixel points allows you to get an extra home. You can also get more by buying them on the online server. But what I do is 
I actually use my homes that I get. I, I've got 11 homes. Here, let me, let me show you real quick. Slash home list. As you can see, I have 11 homes available and I've used nine of them. So if you look at the list of my homes, you can see I've got different names for them. And you can see, like, I've got homes specifically set for, like, Kirim, Latios. I got my Landorus spawn set, Cosmog, and Reshiram. Now, some of these can be used for multi-purpose. Like, some legendaries spawn in the same biomes as other ones. So, they, they're multi-purpose. But I highly recommend you guys get at least three or four... Three or four of these extra homes to set for whatever legendary that you're farming. Um, this... I know lots of people have asked me what they should spend their pixel points on like and I always tell them spend it on extra homes like the value of this is insane and they're like I don't I've got two homes I don't need any more this is why I always say get extra homes like this is the reason that this is what makes them so valuable and you can see like people like Aussie age who have been on the server for years like they've got over 20 homes available because they've got a home set for each like rare biome to farm the legendaries that people might be looking for and paying big money for so this is why you really want to get those extra homes for your account all right so now that i kind of talked to you guys about the two things that i really recommend having the clock and the extra home set um ideally you want to have the extra home set to the biomes of the legendaries that you're farming um so now i just want to kind of show you like what it looks like in practice so let me type in slash legend this command obviously shows you the history of which legendaries have spawned. I was the one who got the Kyogre, by the way, so this is a perfect time to make this video. Um, but it shows you the uh, the next spawn attempt for a legendary is going to be in 3 minutes and 49 seconds. So, with that kind of number in mind, I look at my clock that I've got in the bottom of my tool belt. And I'm thinking, okay, 3.5 minutes, the, uh, the it'll probably be around dust time, right? So my guess would be like if I want to just go there and like farm this legendary Like I need to be there by the time the spawn attempt comes around so I could like up until that point I can just do whatever but like at least you know a couple seconds before the spawn attempt comes I want to do slash home land Now the reason why I do the landers one or the land one is because landers spawns at dawn and dusk uh, This is also the I would I believe the most rare legendary on the server and most useful uh, they're extremely valuable so if you get the chance you want to be able to come to the uh, like a landorus uh biome just try to spawn one in uh don't just don't get discouraged if you you know you don't get lucky it, it took me literally um i think it was like three or four weeks of like trying to hit the spawn time right before i finally got a landorus um but you know once this let's say this timer goes away right so we got yeah two and a half minutes left if this one like fails to spawn it's gonna obviously be nighttime by the next time the uh, the timer comes around so when I when that happens I'm gonna actually go to my home Latios spawn and swim over to my uh, Kyogre area now the reason why I pick Kyogre I've got a uh, couple of Kyogres already that have synchronized to modest but a lot of people like really want Kyogre like primal Kyogre is a, a, a very sought after Pokemon. It, it's ridiculously strong. So if you can catch one and then on top of it synchronize it, you've got yourself, I would say, probably like twenty, like a $20,000 legendary Pokemon. Even if you don't want it, you can sell it for money or trade it to somebody for a different legendary that you actually want. Now, for those of you watching this video, I don't want you guys to get discouraged if you try this technique and it doesn't work right away. Um, this is by no means a method that you use to guarantee a legendary spawn. It's just used to help you increase the chances of a legendary spawning on you. So what my recommendation would be like for each time of day, uh, you know, dawn, dusk, morning, or like, you know, daytime and nighttime, find a legendary that spawns at each one of those time periods and then get a slash home set for each of the biomes for those legendaries because like we have not had a legendary in over an almost an hour and a half 58 seconds there's going to be another chance so i'm going to go back to the kyogre spawn but what, I, what i'm saying is like after a half hour of a legendary spawning another legendary has an, a chance to spawn on the server so you want to always try your best to go back to those spawn locations to get those legendaries like i can't express to you guys how many people just sit in their random biomes 
which is why we get so many Suicunes and Raikos and Entes and Genesects. Like, they're just not legendaries that are special and rewarding. Like, nobody even wants to buy them. I think, like, people have been selling Entes for, like, 1,500. So it's not even... You need over two of them to buy a Master Ball. That That's ridiculous to me. So do yourselves a favor. Take advantage of this technique. Um, you know, I'm not going to say you're going to guarantee yourself a Lander's Spawn. Three seconds. Come on, cross your fingers. Um, oh, Necrozma. Okay. Not not a horrible spawn. But, yeah, I'm not, not saying you're going to guarantee that you get a Kyogre or a Landorus. Like, you might get some maybe slightly less common Pokemon. But you are going to increase the chances of getting one. So, that's all that really matters. Um, anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider hitting that like button. Um, and if you're new to this new to the uh, the channel considering that subscribe button I'm, I'm working my way to uh, 600 subs right now um, but definitely trying to hit that 1,000 sub goal mark by the end of the year would be incredible but hopefully this video helped you guys and I'll see you all next time